Hey everybody, and welcome to the uh, latest lockdown edition of the Orminators. Um, Chris Orr of the Orminators, and today's project is um, we're going to be installing a, a skid plate on uh, on Valkyrie. Valkyrie is the uh, 2017 Jeep Renegade that I have. I'll go ahead and sh give you uh, a view of her now. 2017s. It's a very very reliable vehicle so far. I've gone back and forth to. Uh, Tempe, Arizona several times, if you, as you may have seen in some of my previous videos. Uh, but today we are going to be installing this thing. So this is the uh, ATP or American Trail Products front skid plate and transmission skid plate. So it's designed to basically, um, as you're doing some off-roading or overlanding anyways in rougher roads. I'm not going to be doing any sort of major, you know, rock crawling or anything like that, but I do want to protect the underside a little bit more than it currently is. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, install this little bugger. It is a heavy piece of steel, um, so I'm pretty confident that it'll uh, it'll hold up under whatever, you know, minor stuff that I'm going to do. It'll probably hold up quite well against some pretty heavy duty rock crawling too, but uh, I won't be doing that with, uh, with Valkyrie. This is just so that um, I do have a modicum of under underbody uh, protection there. In any case, I'm going to get her uh, jacked up. Those are not the Harbor Freight jack stands that are under recall, just so that you know. I'm going to get her jacked up and uh, get the uh, the uh, original uh, under under undercarriage protection out, and then we'll uh, we'll get her going. I'll do a time lapse of that. Okay, step one, I'm going to remove these 5 T30 bolts here. So we'll go ahead and get going on that. So by the way, this is everything that we'll be protecting with the skid plate. So you can see all the internals here, oil pan, exhaust, transmission, all of that is gonna get covered up by that plate. All right, next, I gotta get these clip nuts. I'll just take a picture of them where you can see them here. This is what the uh, plate is going to use for threaded, and they're going to go onto these little holes right here, like so. That's easy enough. It's funny that this plate is here already. These holes are here, like it's waiting for this thing to be installed. There we go. <clears throat> on. <laughs> I said nuts. All right. So there's the plate in place. Nice ATP logo there. And uh, I'm about to go and do the back bolts as well. And one thing I noticed, however, is that with the skid plate in place, it does kind of sort of block access to the oil pan 
So I'm gonna have to dig around and look around real close at this a little bit and see how I'm gonna easily change the oil on this thing. And notice I had to use a jack stand to get it up in place because uh, the fucker is heavy. <laughs> um, and they recommend that you do this with somebody else, which from a safety standpoint, it's probably a fantastic idea considering that you're crawling around under a vehicle with jack stands, which in this case are not the recalled ones again, but uh, you never know. And so you hate to be uh, squished. So safety first, kids. I'll always make sure that you're doing this as safely as you can. But I live by myself, and so I don't have much of a choice. I can't, don't have anybody to call on. All my kids are down in uh, Arizona. So, But uh, I figured it out using the jack stand to, uh, to prop it up, almost like a transmission jack kind of a thing in this case. And uh, yeah, we'll keep going. So the kit comes with all the necessary hardware. Among the things that it did come with are these two spacers. There's a, there's a three quarter inch and a one inch. The three quarter inch goes towards the front, the back, the one inch goes towards the back, and then the bolts go in connecting through those uh, uh, clip nuts that I installed a little bit earlier. Another important safety tip as you're doing this is they want you to make sure that the fender lip here, the fender well, this piece of plastic, is on the outside of the plate as you're doing it. Presumably so that water doesn't collect on the inside as you're, going, as you're driving through uh, rainy weather. And uh, those two holes will obviously disappear once <coughs> the plate is up in its <coughs> taller position. Excuse me, got some dust in there. All right, there you go. The skid plate's in place. Probably adds a good 50, 60 pounds on that <laughs> underneath because it's a pretty heavy duty uh, plate steel. And again, my concern now is how to change the oil with this thing in place because I can't see an easy way to get in there. Let's crawl around a little bit and see what kind of space I have. I mean, it's got drain holes and stuff, but still, maybe I haven't changed my oil in a long time. Maybe they just suck it out through the top these days, so it might be a non-issue if I have it done by a dealer or somebody who knows what the fuck they're doing. But otherwise, yeah, this will be an interesting exercise to see how it gets done. But in any case, got a pretty fair chunk of weight now on the front end, so that should theoretically reduce gas mileage, I guess. But at the same time, it's a little bit more aerodynamic under there because now it's a nice smooth surface as opposed to the rough under undercarriage. So there's that. I'm probably gonna end up also getting their uh, drive shaft skid plate down there later on. But uh, yeah, no, this is a pretty good start. First time I've really seriously turned a wrench on a vehicle and done my own modifications in a while. So a, little fun, a lot of fun. Easy to do once you get past the awkwardness of the heavy plate there, which I did figure out with jack stand. So I'm gonna go ahead and put her back down on the ground and uh, back her back out into the driveway. Thanks for watching this video and uh, smash that like button. Give a comment about how you might change the uh, oil in a situation like this. And let me know what's going on.